Hi y'all and welcome to my home. It's much too cold here in Ohio still to be doing anything outside. We just went through that uh, snowstorm that came through the country. If you were involved in that or in a location that was affected by that, I hope you were safe. Uh, and I hope you had a great holiday and a great new year. I'm recording this at the end of December. Uh, I spend typically this week doing a lot of garden planning for the spring. And so I'm gonna be shooting some videos this week because I've typically taken this time off work to do some spring planning for the garden. Uh, and so we're gonna be going through some designs on the front areas where I removed the spruces, some plans I have and some major projects that I wanna accomplish this uh, spring or year in general. In a coming video, uh, we'll be doing kind of a seed haul on some seeds that I'm not necessarily gonna be starting in spring, but I wanna tell you about them because uh, they're interesting for me. And then today's video is going to be on primarily the annuals that I'm going to be planting in my garden this coming season. So if you've been following along on my channel, you know I do a few containers here and there, but I've not spent a lot of time focusing on annuals. Uh, that is primarily because I have heavy clay soil. So if you're new here and just started recently watching my channel because my summer 2022 garden tour is picking up, Garden tours do really wonderfully in the winter as people are planning their gardens for the next year. And so it's really exciting to see those videos taking back off. Even my 2021 garden tour, I need to go back and watch those because there's been so much that has changed just since last summer. Like I mentioned, one of the reasons I don't plant a whole lot of annuals in my garden is because I have a heavy clay soil. Annuals, of course, need rapid root development to be able to produce beautiful blooms and get pretty large uh, in just a season, since they are gonna die off with the first frost in most cases. Uh, that heavy clay prohibits a lot of that root growth really quickly, and so I've had issues in the past putting any annuals in the ground. They just don't thrive very well. But my garden, since I've been planting in it for the past few years, I've been amending it with lots of lots of mulch, lots of organic fertilizers, and I think it's time for me to try some more things in the ground. So a lot of the things I'm gonna be going over and talking about today are things that I'm gonna be putting, some in containers, but there's a lot of bedding plants that I'm gonna be focusing and putting around where I remove the spruces in October because that's gonna be big empty spaces. And although I have some design plans and I like to use lots of small shrubs to fill those places, the truth is those shrubs, because they're new, are gonna be tiny and there's gonna be, need to be something to fill that space so we just don't have a bunch of mulch. I'm also intending to kind of open my garden up for a garden tour for friends and family this summer. And so I want a lot of impact and the way to do that is through annuals. And so we're gonna try this year growing lots of annuals in the ground. So I have a list here of lots of things. Uh, interestingly enough, I. I'm getting all of these items from Stock Slaggers. If you followed along in November, you know I went and visited their greenhouses in November, early, mid-November, to look at the poinsettias, which are still doing really great here in my home during the holiday season. Stock Slaggers primarily focuses on annuals. Uh, they do have some perennials, from my understanding, and maybe some shrubs, but they primarily grow annuals uh, from cuttings or from plugs, and so, I'm gonna take you along in the spring a couple times to show you that process of getting in the plugs, potting up the plugs and growing on those plugs. It's something I'm really excited about showing you a little more behind the scenes. I like that type of stuff. I wanna know where my stuff is coming from, the process of its creation, and I think that's really exciting. So subscribe and follow along for those videos in March and April. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna go over some of these annuals. They are in no particular order. I will tell you there are no reds. I don't do a whole lot of reds in my gardens. I primarily focus on uh, pastel colors, pinks, purples, blues, yellows, and whites. Uh, and so most of these are that pink purple color and some corals, and of course some great whites for that dramatic impact. I have my computer here so I can pull up some images to talk to you about. Uh, that way I can remember what they are because there are quite a few of them. And the first one we'll go over is Angelonia Serenata Raspberry. And I think this is a really beautiful purpley Angelonia. A lot of these things you'll be able to find at your local garden centers, of course. All of these should be available at Stock Slaggers if you're local in the spring. I've never planted an Angelonia before, so this will be my first foray into Angelonias. A lot of the stuff in here, in fact, I've not planted a lot 
before. And so I imagine these are gonna be some things that I will put in containers. Uh, I just got one flat of them, so they'll be around 18 plants. Not a ton, uh, but I will be able to tuck those here and there in the front yard or the backyard. And then we're gonna do a few begonias. Now I've also never grown begonias before, uh, but I'm going with the bronze leaf begonias, both pink and white. These are pretty standard, you've seen these a lot, and I'm gonna be using those as bedding plants. So I ordered quite a number of those. And so these will primarily probably take the place of going around the plants and shrubs I put around the, where the spruces were. Uh, and then along the backyards, just as front of the border filler plants. Last year was the first year I grew cannas, uh, and I had purchased those from a small garden center in the spring. Uh, even before our last frost and tuck them to the side. I'm growing one this year that I'm getting from Stock Slaggers called Canova Bronze Leaf Peach. I love that peach color. This one has bronze leaves also, which is really beautiful and can make a dramatic impact when paired with white plants. And I'm gonna use this plant kind of like the thriller in some of those containers. And so this past year I put cannas in the concrete container I had out front. I'm going to be moving that container, and I'll talk about that in one of my future design videos that I'm going to be shooting this week. But uh, there will probably be the thriller in that container. I'm getting a few of them, so I can probably put some elsewhere as well. But primarily, I think that's going to be a really, really beautiful plant that's going to be a focal point in front of my window where I'm going to move that container. Now you're probably thinking, uh, like I'm currently concerned since we had this crazy cold weather about the dahlias I'm trying to overwinter in my raised beds. I have not gone out there and checked on them. I have not checked the temperature. I did put a thermometer out there under the tarp that I laid on top of them. I'm just letting it rest and we'll deal with it in spring. If my dahlias do not make it, we'll plant something else uh, in its place like zinnias or something. I am still intending to do the vegetable garden project, so if I don't have the dahlias make it, uh, that'll be something that'll make that project easier for me. I'm hoping they do. They did a really great job this past year, but just in case, so I have some dahlias, and I'm actually gonna try and grow a few in the ground this year. I'm ordering a dahlia called City Lights Purple. Now this is a smaller dahlia. It doesn't get really huge and tall like a lot of the other dahlias. dahlias. It's intended to be primarily, I think, a plant that you put in containers. And so I'm going to use this in containers, but I'm also going to use this around the landscape in some areas where the soil is not as heavy with clay. Because dahlias, although they like a little bit of moisture, they do not want to be sitting in any type of water or clay soil. They were rot. My first year dealing with dahlias, they completely rotted every one of them I put in the ground. So I've been really hesitant to put any more in the ground since about three years ago at this time. Uh, but we're going to be trying that again this year because I'll have a flat of them uh, that I can experiment with, essentially. I do have a few Proven Winners plants in this listing here. I love Proven Winners annuals because they just provide a big punch and a big bang for your buck. They do tend to be a little more expensive than your typical six packs, but in my experience, they will blow any six pack out of the water. Uh, so... I am getting this year Diamond Frost Euphorbia, which I have purchased previously and used in containers. I think it's been about two years ago. So it's not been something, I didn't actually buy a whole lot of annuals this past year uh, other than leafy things. And so this will be something that I planted a couple years ago, but that I'm bringing back in. And so I think I just got one flat of those. And so there'll be a 10 total that I'll have to stuck in containers, but they also do pretty good in the landscape I hear and I've seen. So this might be also something to tuck around to give a little white ethereal vibe around some of the shrubs and stuff I'll be planting around the spruces. Then we have the standard Dichondra Silver Falls. This is one of my favorite spiller plants. I've used it uh, in a container probably each year that I've been gardening. Uh, it's beautiful, like silvery, powdery color. I actually had some volunteer this year from seeds that must have failed. Uh, from a container. I didn't do anything. I kind of left it where it was. It didn't get really big because it was growing in the ground instead of in a container, but it was interesting to see that reseed in my garden. So Dichondra Silver Falls will apparently reseed if you give it a little love. One thing I'm going to be planting this year is Dusty Miller Silver Dust. This is also a pretty common accent plant to use in containers. That's probably where I will be putting it. It can take 
uh, varying conditions. So I can use it on the patio containers or I can use it outside in the landscape. Really also beautiful powdery white silver color to pair with other blooms in your garden. No container and no garden is complete without some Ipomoea or uh, sweet potato vine. So I'm going to be going with one called Solar Power Black Heart this year. Uh, it is a black sweet potato vine. I tend to love black better than green. Uh, although the first year that I planted sweet potato vine in my garden, I did go with a green and it was gorgeous. If I can find a photo, I will put it on the screen, but it was really kind of took over the space and the containers. And so I'm going with black this year because I think it does a really interesting pairing with probably some of these white uh, blooms and white foliage, the powdery silver foliage that I just went over. Uh, it'll be a really nice combination. You can also, of course, plant these in the landscape, so I may I'll probably experiment planting some things there. Whatever I do with all of these annuals, I'm going to at least try them in the ground and in containers because I want to know what grows well in the ground so in successive years I can buy some more of those things to plant in the ground. Uh, if I only use it in one location, then I won't really know if it's good to plant in the ground in future years. Another one I'm getting, which I don't know that I've planted this one before, is Snow Princess Sweet Alyssum by Proven Winners. This is also a really, really great front of the border plant. You can, of course, grow alyssum from seed, uh, sweet alyssum. There's also a perennial alyssum, uh, and they are really beautiful. But Snow Princess from Proven Winners is just a massive carpet. Uh, this might be something that I will definitely probably use in the landscape around some of those new shrubs or out front. It'll be a great filler plant because it can probably get two to essentially almost four foot wide in some cases if it has the right growing conditions. I've seen them get massive and so that's going to be a really interesting plant to tuck here and there in the garden and just see how it performs. It intermingles well along other plants as long as you have something that can compete really well stuff can grow through it still uh, but it is a hog so if you have punier plants snow princess could potentially take those over so just be cognizant of that. What I'm really excited about growing is Supertunia Vista Jazzberry. So Supertunia Vista Jazzberry is a newer Supertunia by Proven Winners. I think it was introduced last year, maybe the year before, and I have not seen it locally anywhere. Maybe a Lowe's, but I don't tend to purchase a lot of annuals from Lowe's. I haven't seen any garden centers carry it, but Stock Slaggers apparently does. I don't know if they grew it last year or not, but this year they are growing it, and so I'm getting a whole flat of Supertunia Vista Jazzberry. Now last year in the front containers on the porch, the hay racks, I grew all foliage plants. I might go back to doing some petunias there this year now that I'll have this glorious selection of annuals, but I'm not completely sure yet. I did love all the foliage there with the uh, caladiums and the coleuses, so that might stay there. They did really well. One of the problems I've had with supertunias in that area specifically is I have ferns above them and the ferns get watered and drop water onto the plants below them, which are usually typically the petunias. Uh, in those locations, because they don't get all day sun, they stay a little damper, and I've had issues with Supertunia Bordeaux, specifically getting white fly or some type of other infestation, and because I have a lot of hummingbirds uh, and other insects that really love to feed on those Supertunias, I don't wanna have to uh, treat those with a chemical that could kill those things. And so uh, I probably will go back with the foliage there, but I want to try these Supertunia Vistas. They may go in the concrete container that I mentioned with the cannas. Uh, they would also be great to try in the ground because I've tried Supertunias in the ground once, uh, and that was in 2021. I planted them around my Bobo hydrangeas out here, and it could potentially be that they didn't get enough sun, but they didn't perform like they do for me when I put them in containers. And so now that I'll have a big selection of them, at least 10, I can put some in containers and in the ground. The next one on the list is Rockin' Blue Suede Shoe Salvia. This is one I've also not seen a whole lot locally uh, at garden centers. I've had Rockin' Purple in the past because that's what I can find, but I specifically love blue flowers and they're really difficult to find. Hummingbirds love them, pollinators love them specifically, and I've seen them perform really incredibly well in the landscape. And so I'm getting some of those this season to both trial in containers, which they've done well for me in the past, and in the landscape. Uh, like I mentioned, a lot of these will probably be going up front where those spruces were. So it's gonna be really decked out 
beautiful curb appeal this year, I hope, with all of these in-ground annuals. Something new I'm trying this year, which I have not tried in the past, are sun patients. And so when I started my gardening journey for almost five years ago now, um, I tried impatience and I don't know what it is about our area and our yard. I think we have something which a lot of people have issues with called impatient blight. Uh, you plant the impatience, they slowly defoliate completely and then they die. And that's the experience I had. It has something to do with a specific bacteria in your soil and it's really difficult and hard to eradicate if you can even get rid of it. So if you're having issues with regular impatience, give sun patients a try. It's kind of a hybrid new version of impatience on the market. And what's really interesting about it is it can take sun and shade. And so these I'm gonna be using specifically around the spruces. These are some of the bedding plants that I specifically see a lot in the ground. So I'm hoping they do really, really well in my ground as well. I am excited about using them. And so I picked up Orchid Blush, which is a very light pink that will pair with a lot of the other blooms I'm selecting in my garden. Uh, one called Compact Deep Rose, which is that beautiful coral color that will also pair really well with that canna that I showed you earlier. And then one that's a little more of a splash called Tropical Rose. And this one, I think I'm going to be putting where I typically put my annual geraniums at, uh, out front under the magnolia that I have there already. This one is really interesting because it has an inner yellow, it's almost like a variegated leaf, but it has an inner yellow petal and with a green stripe around it, giving it a very tropical look to it. And it has very bright pink blooms. And so that one's gonna be really lovely, I think, and provide a nice pop of color in some shadier areas. I also may stick some of these out back. I didn't get as many of the tropical rose, but I really beefed up on the orchid blush and the deep rose sun patients. And so I'm getting several flats of those. So I'm gonna have a lot of sun patients to try out in spaces this year. And I'm super excited about because of the way I've seen them perform for others. An interesting one I am trialing this year from Stock Slaggers is called Trinia Summer Wave Blue. Now this is a proven winter's plant. I have never seen it locally. Uh, that doesn't mean a whole lot because I haven't grown a whole lot of annuals but it's really beautiful. It looks almost like a viola flower, but of course it is a proven winner's annual, so it is going to get pretty large. And so this is one that I'll be doing both in containers and in the ground, as I mentioned, but it's this beautiful purple and light purple mix. And like I said, it kind of looks like a viola, so it'll be interesting to see where I end up putting those uh, and how they perform both in the ground and in containers. One plant that I specifically love, and it was one of the first years that I had my hay rack containers out there, is Superbina. Proven Winners has a really great line of verbena. Uh, I have, think I've done the Royal Cherry Burst, I think it was called. It was kind of a different color, white and red verbena a few years ago with some supertunias. Now the supertunias consumed the verbena at the beginning of the year and towards the end of the year the verbena came back uh, with a vengeance and so it took over when those supertunias were struggling a little bit from that white fly issue I was having. But this one specifically is called Imperial Blue and it is very much a lighter purple, uh, a horticultural blue more likely is what you would consider it. So it is that little purpley. In this picture here, you can see some slight blue colors in some of the flowers, but Supervena performs really incredibly well for me. So I'm really excited to try that one out this year because I've never grown it. I think it might be a newer one from Proven Winners. Uh, and I'm really excited to see it both in the ground and in containers as well. One thing I'm trying this year is Vinca Periwinkle Tattoo Blueberry. And so this is a also horticultural blue uh, flower, it's more purple, but it's really beautiful. And I've not grown any vincas before in my garden. So this will be one that I will consider like a bedding plant that I'll put in some of my uh, beds. And I'm not sure if this one will make it in containers because it's gonna be competing with some of the proven winter ones that I have in containers and it will probably likely get engulfed if I stick it up next to any of those. And so I might give this one a special place in the garden for it will perform pretty well on, on its own. And that, my friends, is the listing for now. But out of those I showed you, that's gonna be over 400, almost 450 annuals 
that I'm getting in the week of Mother's Day. And so that's typically the time around here in my zone and my location where they give us the all clear for last frost. I didn't want to get these any earlier, so I don't have them sitting around. And so early May, these will be delivered. And I'll walk you through that process because it'll be really exciting. I've already scheduled the day off work. Uh, and we'll see and start getting those in the ground. The way that my projects are gonna align in the spring, I'm trying to get the trees planted in late March, early April, and then the shrubs also planted in April, late April. That way when these annuals arrive, that will really be about the only thing I have left to get into the garden. Uh, and then I can just start sticking those in the ground as they come in so I don't have them sitting around too long. Cause the more likely that I don't have that space prepared, uh, the more likely that these things will suffer, uh, which I don't want to happen at all. These, of course, will likely not be all the annuals that I have this year. I will be growing some from seed, which will be a separate video, but I'm not growing as much from seed in the winter time as I'll be starting stuff from seed after our last frost, most likely. What I don't want to happen is since I have so many early spring projects, I don't want to take time away from my seed starting or take time away from those projects having to tend to those seeds with the limited time I have in the spring. Uh, if I do, then I could risk not getting some of the stuff done and then all my projects be delayed. So the seed video will be a separate video. Uh, I will also probably pick up some things here and there at the garden center uh, as just single plants because this is a big bulk of the same stuff. Uh, and since this is my first foray into annuals, I may go get a pair of things to trial in the ground and in containers as I need them. But thank you so much for joining along in the new year. I'm excited you're here. I'm excited about 2023. My garden, now that a lot of things have been in the ground for several years now, is really coming into its own. And I have a lot of exciting things planned for 2023 that I think are going to do really, really well. I hope you're staying warm wherever you are. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care, everyone. Bye.